Imagine taking an overgrazed and barren farm and turning it into an African wilderness once again. That's exactly what's happening at Shamwari, a nature reserve on the Cape of South Africa. The livestock is getting a one-way ticket out and the wildlife is moving back in. And there's nothing wilder than the big cats. After two centuries in exile, the lions, leopards and cheetahs are reclaiming their land. And when the prime predators return, the consequences will be deadly. For hundreds of years, farmers on the eastern Cape of South Africa have fought to rid the land of its prime predators. The leopard, hyena, cheetah, and the biggest and strongest of them all, the lion. All of these animals were a threat to livestock. Shamwari is the site of a bold new experiment, a project that's trying to fix what generations have destroyed, transforming 20,000 hectares, 48,000 acres of barren farmland into a wildlife sanctuary. First, the electric fences went up. Then the wild animals started arriving. There's already a large herd of elephants. There are zebra, wildebeest, black and white rhino, and the most graceful of all African animals, the giraffe. All the new arrivals have come from wildlife reserves that are overstocked and need to find new homes for them. Today, we start the most crucial stage of this groundbreaking project. It's time to introduce the first of our prime predators, the lion, the mightiest of the big cats. There are three of them, a two-year-old male with name Temba and two sisters, Nonku and Nompu. This enclosure has been their home for the past two months. It's allowed them to get used to their new surroundings. Now it's where they feel safe and chances are they won't want to leave. A fresh carcass is being brought in to lure them out. It's working. Nonku and Nompu lead the way. They haven't been fed for the last few days and their hunger is overcoming their anxiety. But our sisters are taking it very slowly. They can't work out what's happened to the electric fence and they're worried they might get zapped if they go any further. This caution is good. It means they've already learnt their most important lesson. Electric fences mean danger. It's a lesson that could save their lives once they're released. Shamwari is surrounded by farms. If the lions leave the reserve, there's a very good chance they would be shot by farmers trying to protect their livestock. That would be a disaster. With less than 21,000 African lions left in the wild, every one of these lives is precious. Back in the enclosure, Temba, our young male, is still hiding. He's letting the sisters check if it's safe. He probably won't come out until after dark. We'll have plenty of time to get to know him. Over the next year, Shamwari's veterinarian, Johan Joubert, 
and ecologist John O'Brien will be following the progress of our lions. Anything could happen. The bushy vegetation of the Cape is very different from the grassy plains our lions are used to. Different hunting techniques will be needed. The success of the entire project requires the lions to adapt quickly to their new terrain. If they make it through and eventually breed, then the Shamwari experiment will be heralded a success. With the lions back, the top priority is making sure there's enough for them to eat, and that means stocking the reserve with the right kind of prey species. These zebra were bought at a livestock auction, a place where excess stock from overcrowded game reserves is sold. The rarer the animal, the higher the price tag. It's not going to be cheap keeping our prime predators. Lions need a fresh kill about every three days. If prey becomes thin on the ground, then the lions might turn their attention to the sheep farms that border the reserve. It's making the local farmers nervous. The last thing they want is the return of the prime predators threatening their stock. Shamwari's veterinarian, Johan Joubert, has called a meeting to try and set their minds at ease. The farmers are worried warthogs will be able to dig their way under the fences and provide an escape route for the predators. Johan is explaining there's no need to be concerned. Live electric cables have been placed at ground level to stop this happening. We'll soon know if it's working. Our lions are already on the prowl. It's been three days since Temba and the sisters left their enclosure, and Shamwari's ecologist, John O'Brien, is on their trail. We need to see if they've made a kill. We catch up with Temba checking out his new home. It's our first good look at our young male, and he's spectacular. Temba has been fitted with a radio collar. It's the best way to keep track of the three lions and ensure they're staying well away from the farms. There's not much of a welcoming committee for our new arrivals. Warning cries are sounding out across Shamwari. The prime predators are back in town. And for the first time in almost two centuries, a lion's roar is heard on the Cape of South Africa. It's making the herbivores, the vegetarians, very nervous. While a lion is no match for a fully grown elephant, the little ones could be in danger. These females are forming a fortress around the babies. There's no way a lion could penetrate that wall of defence. Lions usually feed about once every three days, so they must be getting hungry, but they still haven't made a kill. That's not to say they haven't been trying, but some of their attempts have been a little ambitious. A lion is no match for a black rhino. That horn can do some serious damage. Rhinos are also very aggressive and completely fearless. They're one of Africa's most dangerous animals. Luckily, this rhino sees Nonku and Nompu as little more than an irritation. He's more interested in scent marking his territory. 
It's good to see our sisters hunting together. But in this case, they give it a miss. A wise move. Their next target is also a bad choice, a giraffe. Just one kick from those powerful legs can mean instant death. It's very rare for inexperienced lions to bring down a giraffe. And it's going to take a lot more time and practice before Nonku and Nompu stand any chance of succeeding. On average, lions will only succeed in killing once out of every five attempts. And Nompu is already nursing a wound from an earlier encounter with an impala. Our male Temba isn't being much help. Females tend to make the kill, then the males move in to feed. That's not to say our sisters don't need Temba. His role is vital in stopping rival males entering their territory and killing future cubs. But for today, the sisters have given up. They'll be going hungry for another night. It's time to meet Shamwari's newest recruits, a deadly duo of cheetah. They've been cared for at a wildlife shelter in Southern Africa, part of the National Cheetah Conservation Project. The shelter rescued the two cheetah from a certain death sentence. They'd been wreaking havoc on local wildlife, drastically diminishing stocks. They had to go or risk being shot. Now they have a chance of a new life at Shamwari. But first, we have to get them there. And the largest of the two is fighting the tranquilizer. He needs a top up. Cheetah are amazing animals. They're the smallest of the big cats, but also the fastest, reaching speeds of up to 70 miles, 110 kilometres an hour. This is the slowest you'll ever see a cheetah move. Now they're down, we have to move fast. There's a long journey ahead. The less time they're sedated, the quicker they'll recover once they reach Shamwari. A five hour flight, four men and two cheetah make for a deadly combination on a small plane. Everyone will be looking forward to touchdown at Shamwari. Back at the reserve, our lions still haven't eaten and the electric fences are about to be put to the test. We've tracked our pride of lions to a hill overlooking a neighbouring farm. The sheep next door must be very tempting, but it seems our lions have learnt their lesson. Stay away from the electric fences. Besides, there's plenty of prey nearby. The chase is on. The lions have made their first kill. It's a huge relief for everybody involved in the Shamwari project. Normally, the male would eat first. He's the strongest, so there's no arguing. But Temba is still young, and his females are holding their own. These guys are built for feeding. On an empty stomach, a male can eat up to 50 kilos, 110 pounds of meat at a single sitting. And they don't even have to chew before they swallow. Their digestive system can process meat so efficiently, they can just bolt it down. To remove the flesh from bones, they use their tongues, which are as rough as sandpaper. Just licking a person's skin can draw blood. Forty-five minutes later, the lions were gone. And so was the reed buck. 
our lions have passed their first test. They've learnt to hunt in their new terrain. At Shamwari's veterinary centre, our deadly duo of cheetah have touched down. The first job is fitting them with radio transmitters. It's vital we keep track of the cheetah. They tend to make a fresh kill every day. And if they get into the surrounding farms, they could wreak serious havoc on the livestock. Normally, you use a radio collar when you want to fit a tracking device. But cheetah have such a flexible body that it's almost impossible to keep a collar on them. That's why we have to put the transmitter inside the abdominal cavity. This transmitter has a battery that lasts about 18 months. By then, our deadly duo should be well and truly settled into their new home. Like the lion, cheetah are a threatened species, with less than 15,000 left in the wild. They need all the help they can get. Each one we can save is a real victory. The cheetah will spend several weeks in this enclosure getting used to their new surroundings and learning about the electric fences. Then they'll be joining the lions and going it alone. Every animal introduced to Shamwari plays an important role keeping nature in balance. The smaller predators benefit from the cheetah. Cheetahs are notorious for being wasteful they only like fresh meat. That means the smaller carnivores, like these jackals, can feast on the leftovers. Elephants are also important for the survival of many of the smaller species. They open up thick bush and create pathways for other animals to move along and feed from. These other animals then play their role in the ecosystem, like the bat-eared fox. It's vital in pest control, keeping down the numbers of rodents and small insects. Then there's the herbivores. They have two roles. First, they're nature's gardeners, pruning the trees and grass, keeping the plants healthy. Their second function, is food for the prime predators. Getting the Shamwari experiment to work is all about getting the right balance of animals in the ecosystem. Out on the savannah, Temba and the sisters are settling in. Even though they've overcome their first hurdle, hunting, there are many more challenges to come. Timber is scent marking his territory. He can hear the distant roar of another pride. Our lions are no longer alone. And that means danger. Shamwari has introduced another male and two females to the southern part of the reserve. They're about the same age as Timber and the sisters, so the groups are evenly matched. Things are about to get very interesting. Lions are highly territorial. Newcomers won't be welcome. Timber's heard the other male. He's responding, sending out a powerful roar. The new male will be getting the message loud and clear. Stay away unless you want trouble. Nonku and Nompu are also on full-scale alert. They're sniffing the air for signs of the intruders. There's a lot at stake. Once a pride has established its territory, it will often pass it on from generation to generation. Everyone's nervous. The sisters know that if Temba takes over a new pride, there will be other lionesses to compete with. Nonku is about to play her ultimate card. She's pretending she's in estrus, ready to mate. If Temba mates with her, it'll confirm her status as chief female in the pride.
September isn't fooled. He's sniffing her scent and suspects she's trying to trick him. Nonku just can't take a hint, and Temba has had enough. All of our lions are very edgy. The last thing they want is a confrontation with the new pride. But it's only a matter of time before they meet. We're about to introduce another prime predator. This time, it's the brown hyena, one of Africa's most common carnivores and one of the most important. Hyenas play a vital role in nature, quickly scavenging what the lions and cheetahs leave behind. They're the waste disposal team, helping stop the spread of disease from rotting carcasses. In fact, their powerful jaws and cast iron stomach allow them to eat just about anything including bones. The only parts not fully digested are hair, horns and hooves. They might be important in nature, but that doesn't make hyenas popular with farmers. This one was injured after being trapped. It would have been killed if Shamwari hadn't stepped in. Now the hyenas will call Shamwari home. Here they'll be safe from people. Like so many other animals in Africa, the brown hyena's very existence is being threatened by land clearing and farming. It had to happen, and it has, sooner rather than later. The two lion prides are about to meet. The southern male has moved into Temba's territory. Temba is checking out his competition. The southern male is all too aware he has company, but he's pretending not to notice. Both of our lions want time to evaluate the strength of their opponent before they decide on their next move. Both know how much damage their canines and razor-sharp claws are capable of inflicting. They're formidable weapons, and like any animal, they'll try and avoid fighting whenever possible. But sometimes it's just unavoidable. In fact, three quarters of all male lions die a violent death. It's very rare for a male to reach old age. Temba has sized up the competition, and he knows it's an even match. He backs off, for now. But this is only the beginning. Both males know that one day, one of them will make a move. And still the predators keep coming. This time it's the turn of one of Africa's oddest looking animals. Servals are part of the wildcat family. They're unusual because they've got long legs like a giraffe and large ears like a bat, making them one of Africa's most extraordinary animals. But just like a cat, they've also got razor sharp claws and teeth. Even when drowsy, they can do a lot of damage. Servals will play an important role in the Shamwari ecosystem. They may be small, but they can eat around 4,000 rodents in a single year. And without predators like the serval, rodents can reach plague proportions. Outside, the fence to their enclosure has had to be built extra high. And that's because of those giraffe-like legs. They're long enough to allow them to leap high into the air. They can even catch a bird in flight. 
If the hyenas are Shamwari's garbage disposal unit, then that makes the servals in charge of pest control. The time has finally come. The southern male is still in Temba's territory, too close for comfort. And Temba is about to be ambushed for the second time. Both males already bear the scars from an earlier clash. And we're about to witness round two. The southern male is moving in. Lions have large pads on their feet. They're soft to muffle sound when stalking and big enough to bring down a zebra with one slap. They can also do a lot of damage to another lion. And here comes the southern male. One of the lion's best defences can be the size of its mane. The bigger it is, the better buffer it provides to teeth and claws. When lions fight, it can only be for short spurts. Each attack takes up a lot of energy and lions don't have many sweat glands, so they need time to cool down. It looks like round two has gone to Temba. He's proved himself a force to be reckoned with. With the victory under his belt, Temba is making sure our southern male knows who's boss. He's driving him out. There can only be one king of this domain. It's a lesson our cheetah will need to learn, and fast. Lions are the cheetah's greatest enemy. We're on the trail of our deadly duo. Our cheetah have been released into the reserve, and Shamwari's ecologist, John O'Brien, needs to know how they're doing. Cheetah might be the fastest land animal, but they can only maintain top speed for a short time. It's important they're close to their prey before they pounce. Our cheetah doesn't know it, but it's playing a dangerous game. Timber is nearby, and lions and cheetahs are age-old enemies. If Temba smells the cheetah, then chances are he'll attack. And a cheetah is no match for the strength of a lion. But for now, the wind is blowing in the cheetah's favour. Temba hasn't picked up its scent. Luck seems to be in the cheetah's favour today. It's brought down an ostrich. Our cheetahs seem to be adapting quickly to their new terrain. Although a curious rhino is making this cat very nervous. Once a cheetah has caught its prey, it has to eat quickly. All too often a leopard or lion will come and take it. In fact, lions get 40% of their food by stealing it from other predators. Cheetah are the best of all the big cats when it comes to hunting. A new day, 
and our Southern male is going it alone. He didn't just lose the fight with Timber, he's also lost his females. The Southern lionesses are paying Timber a visit. Nonku and Nompu aren't impressed. The last thing they want is competition for Timber's attention. Our sisters decide to fight this battle with love. Lions have scent glands on their body and the sisters are exchanging their scent by rubbing against Temba. This helps bond the group together. With new lions on the scene, they need to give Temba all the attention they can. He's the strongest ally they have. Across the mountain, our southern male is getting thirsty. He's been on a hot and dusty search for his females. Just like Temba, he's young and inexperienced. Without his females, he will need to learn to hunt alone. And that means there could be tough times ahead. But there's no need to worry. Temba just isn't interested in the southern females. He's ignoring them and sticking with Nonku and Nompu. They've become a close group. It's time for the final prime predators to be added to the mix. Johan is picking up two leopards. Matimba and Savannah. There she wants to come to you. They will open up so she can see it. They've spent most now of their lives being cared for in captivity. As wild cubs, they were abandoned by their mother. Wildlife carer Brian Jones rescued and reared them. Now it's time for them to go back where they belong. Matimba and Savannah will be Shamwari's biggest challenge so far. Our leopards have had no experience in the wild and they may find it difficult coping on their own once they're released. We'll be carefully monitoring their progress, but only time will tell. Shamwari's dream of an African wilderness is nearing completion. It's one thing to have a vision, but it's another matter altogether to keep the money coming to finance it. For many animals in Africa, ecotourism is their only hope. That's why Shamwari has opened its doors to visitors. It's the only way to keep the reserve stocked and the predators fed. Lions have been eating their way through thousands of dollars worth of prey. They can consume an average of 10 kilos of meat a day. In just 12 months, they've made 121 kills, including 13 wildebeest, 46 kudu, 21 warthog, 8 eland, 4 zebra and 12 ostrich. They've even managed to bring down an adult male giraffe now that takes some serious teamwork. The Shamwari experiment is really working. Temba and the sisters have adapted well to their new terrain and are hunting as an efficient unit. Just as things seem to be working out perfectly, one of the orphaned leopards is playing up. Savannah is causing problems at the visitor's lodge. She seems to prefer the company of humans to animals. She slipped into the grounds of the centre through a gate that had been accidentally left open.
The workers are trying to encourage her away from the main complex. It may take some time before Savannah is completely comfortable in the wild, but it's much better she's out on her own, giving it a go, than the alternative, locked up in a cage somewhere. Savannah the leopard might be misbehaving, but elsewhere things are going to plan. Our pride is acting just as lions should, hunting in the morning and at the end of the day when it's coolest. They've totally adapted to life at Shamwari. In fact, Temba is so comfortable he's making plans for a few new additions. He's started to show a keen interest in Nonku. It's just what everybody hoped for. Temba is about three years old now and ready to mate. But first, he has to get Nonku to cooperate. When a lioness first comes into oestrus, she isn't yet ready to ovulate. For that to happen, she has to mate. This is what induces ovulation. If she isn't interested in the male, she can simply fend him off by sitting down. Nonku is playing hard to get. Once the female is in the mood, she'll lie down and the male will mount her. Once they start, they'll mate up to 40 times a day. It can take up to 1,500 copulations for a female to become pregnant. Each session is over in a minute or two at the most and usually ends in a flash of fangs and claws as the female lashes out at the male. This display could have something to do with the fact that the penis is covered with spines pointing away from the tip. Dismounting must be painful for the female. With luck, three months from now, Nonku will give birth and Shamwari will see its first prime predator cubs. Not all of the lions that come to Shamwari make it back to the wild. The Born Free Centre at Shamwari is a retirement home for abused and neglected big cats. Like this old fellow, saved by the foundation from a life in a barren cage in Athens, Greece. He's joined by a female, also rescued from terrible conditions in the same park. They'll never have the skills to go back to the wild, but this enclosure can offer them the next best thing. Here they can live out their days in comfort and help educate people on the plight of wild animals. Out on the reserve, it's a big day for Temba. It's been 12 months since our lions were introduced to Shamwari and Temba is having his radio collar removed. Okay, that's all right, Johan and John are confident the lions no longer pose a threat to nearby farms. They've well and truly settled into their new environment. They're hunting well and defending their territory, so there's no need to keep such a close eye on them. Nonku has sensed something's wrong. She's keeping a protective watch on Temba. It's good to see. The pride is continuing to work as a close-knit unit. But this is creating a problem. The only way to get to Temba is to dart Nonku as well. Both the lions are finally down and Johan can move in. Temba is still aware of what's going on, 
but the drug is preventing him from lashing out. Johan still needs to be careful. This is an incredibly powerful animal he's dealing with. Finally, that collar is coming off. Timber's beautiful mane can now be displayed in all its glory. That's one down, but there's another one to go. We need to move fast. The drug is already wearing off, and Johan still has to get the dart out of Nonku. First, she needs a shot of antibiotics to stop any infection from the wound. Then it's time to get that dart out. It's also the perfect opportunity to give her a quick checkup. Nonku's showing thickening around the skin above her teats. That's great news. It means she's probably pregnant. This is really exciting. Nonku is a beautiful animal in top condition. She would make a wonderful mother. That's all we have time for. We have to get going. The last place you should ever be is out of a jeep with a fully alert lion. We leave Temba and Nonku knowing the Shamwari experiment is right on track to becoming a total success. the animals at Shamwari are doing really well. Our leopards have finally settled in to their new home. Savannah, the inquisitive one, has lost her interest in humans and is spending more and more time in the trees where she belongs. The elephants are another success story. They were the first animals to be introduced to the reserve four years ago and are now breeding at almost double the national average. As for our brown hyenas, well, we haven't seen a lot of them, but we know they're out there and breeding, picking at the leftovers from kills and carrying out their all-important role as nature's clean-up team. The only downside has been the death of one of our cheetah. It strayed a little too close to our lions and was killed. It's unfortunate but it's also a natural part of life amongst Africa's wild animals. As for our lions, well, it continues to be good news. Shamwari now has two new additions. These youngsters are the first lion cubs to walk this land in nearly 200 years. Just as we thought, Nonku is proving to be a good mother. She's just made a fresh kill and is bringing the little ones in to feed. When hunting, lions hide their cubs in a safe place, returning for them once they've made a kill. We've named the first cub Tamarat, which means miracle, and the second one is Azizi, or precious one. It's hoped these two little cubs 
will represent a beautiful future for all of Africa's animals. They're proof that we can fix what past generations have destroyed and turn a barren landscape into a haven for wild animals. The Shamwari experiment has shown us that every animal plays a vital part in keeping the land healthy. The loss of just one species can throw nature out of balance. That's why Shamwari has been given the stamp of approval from one of Africa's leading environmentalists, Dr Ian Player. When you look at what was here, and I came here 10 years ago with him when there was 2,000 odd acres, there are now 45,000 acres and all the animals have come back. So the lion was the last. So in Zulu terms it was the eat laws, the, the spirit of the animal has come back into the land. And the Abangongkulukulu, thank the great God. Two years later, we returned to the Eastern Cape to see how our lion cubs were doing. History was repeating itself. Tamarat and Azizi had been moved to a new reserve. A fresh carcass was being brought in to lure them out into the open. Like anywhere in Africa, the land can only support so many predators. In a reserve like Shamwari, the numbers have to be controlled. And that meant moving our cubs to another sanctuary on the Eastern Cape, also owned by Shamwari. Azizi is first out. Unlike his father so long ago, he's used to people and that makes him a lot braver. Their new home is another barren piece of farmland that's being transformed into an African wilderness. Like their parents before them, these youngsters are the first lions to walk this land in hundreds of years. The prime predators have reclaimed another piece of Africa's Eastern Cape. 